Welcome to CW Strategies and another great episode and session of Ask the Expert Thursdays. I'm really excited about this topic because it's really turned into a mainstream topic to a certain respect today, but I'm here with one of the pioneers in, in the area of working within the MSP ecosystems and um, really excited about the topic because I think, you know, a lot of vendors in today's marketplace still want to resist working through organized channels, but we want to talk to Ray Culver, uh, who I've known for many years about the topic and why uh, why companies should embrace it versus resist it, right? And so, you know, I've known Ray for many, many years um, now, 10, almost 15 years ago, we met when yeah. he reached out to me uh, in a kind of an interesting scenario saying, hey, I'm, um, I'm looking to work within uh, MSP partners. And this is before that was cool and mainstream. So we're talking to one of the pioneers in <laughs> Uh, going after and partnering with MSPs. Ray, so happy to have you here to chat about this topic today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And uh, it's funny when you say that, I think about like all the gray hair that I have. And I've earned like all this gray hair from uh, being that pioneer that you talk about. <laughs> so thinking about this topic, you know, and working through the MSP channel, like I had said, it's become more mainstream. And yeah. a lot of vendors have put strategies and built their businesses on working within the managed programs and the more strategic approaches to and programmatic way to servicing clients. What are some of the benefits that, you know, both the end user and, and why I want to bring up the end user is, you know, if they see the benefits, it's not going away, right? And yeah. then what are the benefits to the supply community and the vendor community and why they should really get their heads around developing a strategy of working within the MSP channel. Yeah, I think, you know, thinking about the end user first, so the buyer, <clears throat> it's been interesting to watch the MSP because the, the traditional reasons why a buyer would buy is cost savings, um, risk mitigation, and compliance. Those are usually like the three pillars that if you're a first-gen MSP, that's what you're being told this can help with. To think about programs now that are, you know, third, fourth, and fifth generation programs. So they're, I mean, they're looking, they're saying, hey, we've got all those things. We've, we can check all those boxes off. What's next? You know, when you talk to MSP partners, they're constantly asking me, what are you seeing in the marketplace? Because they're constantly being asked to innovate and to do different things. So it's just been interesting to see what the buyer wanted originally and now how that's progressed and, and, and evolved over time. So those are some of the things on the buy side. Yeah, and really they 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 choose them as a strategic partner, right? Yeah. And with that being a very strategic um, partner, they're not going away. They continue no. to advance and bring value to the clients. Yeah, I mean, if you, again, look at the MSP, <clears throat> we'll call it the MSP movement. 20 years ago, it's only gotten stronger. You know what I mean? So. When I first came into Skirion, it was a, a saying that we had, it's like, okay, we either need to get on the train or get off the train. And if you don't get on the train, you're going to be left behind. And then look at the MSP of today and look at, to your point in opening, all the suppliers who have built their complete business on the MSP model and who have dedicated channels. I mean, like complete teams to do nothing but support and build relationships with an MSP. So yes, yeah, very strategic and thought. Um, from both the buy side as well as the supplier side. Yeah, no, it's very cool. And like you say, um, the value to the supply chain, there is incredible benefit to the supply chain and the built businesses around <clears> them. <throat> how, is, how has it benefited some of these companies that have built their businesses and teams around it? You know, and I'm not saying that, that creating a channel is easy because it's not. Um, I do. I, there's a lot that goes into it. You have to really have a good product to deliver. You have to allow, have a lot of trust that's been built and things like that. But I think that's the suppliers who have done it well. You can take a lot of the sales SGNA that you typically are going to have to have out of the equation because 
the beauty of this is you don't you, you can't sell to the MSP the same way that you can sell to a retail client. The MSP, they just they, they don't, that's not their model. So you have to have much more of a partnership and kind of a uh, what's called a farmer type mentality. Um, so you can take that whole sales SGNA, move it to a different place or just don't have it at all and have, you know, let's call it account management where an account manager could have four to five different programs in their portfolio. So they're growing those four to five programs and you don't have to have an account executive to do that. Yeah. And it's true. What I've seen in the market is if you're a really good supplier, the yeah. MSP and you're partnering with MSPs, when the next opportunity to bring them into, bring you into another program or another area of the, exist, the existing program, they're going to be loyal to you if, when you're loyal to them, right? And you're excellent. You want to get to that, you want to get to that spot of, and I, I use this all the time, <clears throat> if that MSP program manager has a client who at the last minute on a Friday says 10 people on Monday morning, they know that when they call you, they trust you, you're going to have 10 people there. That's where you want to get as a supplier partner to that MSP is that they trust you and they know that you understand, you know, them as a company, the MSP program that they have in place, you understand the client um, and that it's just as important to you as it is to them. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And this allows you to focus on delivery in a lot of cases, yeah. right? And really focus on your operations and your delivery. Absolutely versus like you say the business development side and and what that that entails and the cost structure that entails yeah. as well right 100 percent. so you know part of this is there you're a pioneer and you're old hat at this uh a lot of the larger organizations are old hats at this and they've yeah. they put strategies around this um but I want to kind of take it back and say, how do you prepare if if I'm thinking about my MSP strategy, you know, everybody's dealt with MSPs, some have embraced it and, and grown their business with it, others have resisted it, but now we're saying, okay, I got to start somewhere to yeah. really think about this and put um, some investment into it, be it in sales, business development, channel partnership kind of mindset. What, how, how do you start and how do you yeah. prepare to uh, be in that uh, supplier community and really be successful in the MSP yeah. channel? You know, I think some of it is understanding the different models. And when I say that, <clears throat> if someone came to me and said, I want to want to get into the supply game, how do I do this? How do I create a channel? Let's look at the way that you do business today and let's make sure that we protect your retail business. Because the way that you supply into an MSP channel can be very different because a lot of it's based upon speed. You know, you have um, sometimes compressed margins. There's just a lot of different things. So what you want to make sure that you don't do is take your eye off of that retail ball because that's your bread and butter. So that would be the first thing I would say is understand, have someone who can really tell you what does an MSP model look like? What is the supply model going to look like? And how can you create... <clears throat> maybe a separate team, a small team to get it going, but leave your retail alone. Don't, don't ask a lot of people to do both sides because it's just two different worlds. So that would be one of the biggest things, just really understanding. Um, the second thing is to really take a look at the comp structure. So like how your variable comp, how you're comping your recruiters and things like that. Because again, a lot of times in MSP programs, you're going to have less margin just because that's 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 how they're built. Um, so it's like, how do you compensate your recruiter who's working just as hard on that MSP program as someone who is working with something that has a, a you know huge margin? So just really understanding that and figuring out how do we how do we make sure that everybody is taken care of and nobody feels like you know what I'm I, I can't do this like I can't make money by supporting you in this new venture because if you don't have the delivery team from the gate you're screwed. I mean, that's like what you have to have for people really bought into that channel. If you're a newer supplier that's coming to the, the game now, yeah. this yeah. is in the early days where you could, you know, you were one of a few, yeah. this is a one of many suppliers, right? Um, in a lot of cases, the MSP is also used to say no. So you may be maybe knocking on the door of the client and you 
you got uh, a hiring manager that you're friends with from, you know, yeah. uh, sports, a, a, somebody's parent who's on a sports team and, and you think you've got a good lead and then you get pushed to the MSP uh, and they're the, the, the person that's there to say no. Right. Yeah. So how, how do you get into the channel and, and really where do you start to, um, when you're putting in the investment, you'd be successful. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, and I say this all the time because it was told to me all the time. And I go back to the Spurion and Allegis. I remember sitting in front of Julie Planko, who was at the time running global supply base, wonderful yeah. person. Um, and she was like, you know, Ray, let, let get your house in order before we talk about more. So in other words, you know, make sure that you're doing well in the stuff that you're doing. I say that to say, understand what makes you different. If you don't have any business there yet, go into it with really like, what is my differentiator? And be able to very clearly articulate what is the differentiator between you and XYZ staffing down the street. Um, because that's what you're going to have to really lean on to, to get the conversation going. Uh, if you don't have the business to you know, get your own house in order before you bring in more. Yeah. And so, you know, differentiators change over time, but yeah. what, what makes up a differentiator? Because, uh, you know, uh, we've all heard some of the managers feedback and the MSP supply chain groups where they go, Oh, I walked in this morning and I have a hundred phone calls yeah. uh, leaving me voicemails. Uh, what does a differentiator, what, what are some of the differentiators that either you've used or, seen and or what are you seeing now that yeah you know, your friends now that are the msp supply chain folk yeah. um are saying hey listen we're looking for this because they're different uh yeah. and 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 we'd love to have calls from the these these yeah. types of suppliers yeah a couple of the things that i'm hearing just constantly these days from uh, the msp partner is bringing forward diverse talent so, you know, bringing, submitting diversity on the requisitions <laughs> and to take that a step further, I had a conversation the other day with a global MSP partner and it was with the person who leads their North American supply chain. And it was like, you know, not only bringing forth diverse talent, but also having partnerships, you, the staffing firm, having partnerships with community organizations. So when that client when you go to the client, the MSP does and says, hey, I really want to add ABC staffing. And the client says, okay, tell me about them. You know, they have they partner with this particular community organization. Like they're really trying to make a difference within the communities that you're strong in. That's a different shit. I mean, that's kind of like you giving back to make the universe a better place. Um, but the, the diverse talent is just, that's massive. You hear that these days just across the board. Um, the other thing I would say is kind of sector specialization. So working, I'm working with a staffing firm based out of Canada and they've done a lot with oil and gas. So it's like, okay, let's really go deep into that sector, you know, and let's talk to the MSP partners who have a lot of programs and clients within that sector. And let's really highlight what you've done, the successes that you've done and get really deep in that. And let's see if we can create some uh, conversation there. So those are two of the big ones is diverse talent, three of the big ones, community involvement and sector specialization. Makes so much sense. Well, Ray, this has been a pleasure. As always, I I love spending time with you and having great conversations. Likewise. Um, so thanks very much for coming on and sharing your wisdom on why we should be, uh, companies should be looking at working within the MSP channels and um and the how even more importantly yeah thank you for the opportunity